Cause when you win and they lose, I call them April babies, cause they fools. I like tiny steps out of it in the mud, and it'd be like a 50 step. Yeah, it's not man. actually 50 steps. So do you think that? Ten stair at Truro that we both ollied is a real ten yeah, stair. Yeah, because it's fucking high. It's high, isn't it? It's, it's short though. <laughs> yeah, but, but um, I I think that the ten stair at Brightside is easier than that because it's lower. Yeah. And then quite small steps. But I think I've if, done an eight stair. It's harder than that. Do you think if you had like Truro ten stair in your house, you'd be like, oh fucking hell, these steps yeah. are really small. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you would. You know what I mean? It's yeah. too. But then like. City steps are smaller, I think, than regular steps because they're trying to save money because it's the council. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so today on PoserCast, episode two, is it episode two? Episode or? one officially. I episode think? one officially. Yeah. Uh, with guest Gordon McKenzie, award winning tattoo artist, <laughs> keen skateboarder, and musician. Um, so what should we get into skateboarding first? Or? A dad. A dad as well, yeah. of course, yeah. Um, oh, and a husband. But, yeah, and man. a husband. <laughs> I've, uh, I've just got some questions for you about skateboarding, Gordon. Brilliant. Straight in. I've prepared them. So my first question to you is what is your favourite kind of skateboarding? Well, um, I grew up or started skateboarding park so I'd always say park, but um, it's not what some people would consider park, I think, because a lot of the time there's a lot of street involved in park as well now, because the skate park has obviously street sections and uh, as well as like kickers and stuff, but um, yeah, things like jump boxes and carving around and Big you know, airs and stuff. Yeah, and air and stuff and grinding lips and stuff. Not not so technical, kind of more flowy, but big and fun. Yeah, smooth. Man. Although you've got some pretty technical street stuff, do you know what I mean? Like half cap, like In, half cap heel and stuff. You're always pulling out tricks out that I'm just like, it really surprises me that you have it, do you know what I mean? It's more in recent years, I think. Um, but yeah, even... even First starting out, we used to travel around to different skate spots just to build up confidence and learn different tricks down them, I suppose. Um, and trying to do something different than what you'd normally learn, like you know, you'd ollie a stair set and then you'd kick flip it and then you'd tray flip it, but mm. kind of try and do the in between tricks as well. So maybe a uh, half cap a stair set after the ollie and then. Yeah, Backside 180 it, or you know, although those are kind of beginner, well, could be considered beginner tricks as well. Um, and just just gradually building up technicalities, but trying to do something different that you don't see all the time as well. Yeah, man. Well, yeah, you've got a really unique style. I think um, we'll, we'll sort of come back to that, but I think it's I think it's because you're from like a different generation of skateboarding as well. So the people who are skating now, that's the next generation. You know, the cycling skateboarding in nine years it, it goes up and goes down every nine years or whatever yeah. like I'm not sure that's going to happen this time around I think it'll just keep well, being more and more popular I've definitely seen it progress since I started yeah it? yeah you have like a 2000 skater and we're like 2010 yeah. skaters or whatever so you know? you've seen people skateboarding in the 90s you know sort of about the triple flips and how many flips can you do in and out of stuff and yeah. well more into stuff or off of stuff rather than both ends but um yeah like now although these days it's like yeah these days it's like both ends like yeah ridiculous but it's it's quirky stuff as well isn't it you know like a lot of no comply kind of tricks but things that i just can't fathom like i don't understand how it works and although there's a lot of um (laughs) hatred towards yeah there's a lot of hatred towards like the the no comply and things like that um because it's just like a hipster trick trendy trick yeah Yeah, it's just hipster but i can't do it yeah, yeah. It's you know, it's, I've been there, it's on definitely it. another it, skill. It's just another another um, strain of skateboarding. Like, do you think there got... was like um, like a, a sort of hipster trick when you were skating back that time ago? Was there something that you would look at at that point and be like, "That's just such a stupid hipster trick"? Yeah, or... like a trend oh. or whatever. Um, I think it's got to be <clears throat> things that just stem from the Tony Hawk's games, you know, but uh, like a dark slide. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, more muscular flip, I think. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't. Um, 
yeah, I can't front side flip without doing a musker flip. So. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> um, cool. So you're saying park skateboarding for your favourite type of skateboarding? Yeah. The next question I have for you is how long have you been skateboarding? Um, how am I? So I know. Six, I've worked it out. 16 years, I think. Bang on. Yeah, I got my first skateboard Christmas after I turned 11, so it would have been Christmas 2001. Um, nice, the year yeah. I got a PS2. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think we had a PS1. How old was I? In uh, How long ago was it? 16, 16 years, years ago. I would have been 8. Yeah. Christ. Just a baby. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, well, I was 11, so easy to work out, but... Your favourite skate park or skate spot? In fact, do both. Um, ah, it's difficult because, again, going back to Roots, where I first started skateboarding, and um, it was actually built around the time I started skateboarding. It was obviously Salt Mill in Salt Ash. It's where I lived just up the road from. Um, and it wasn't quite finished. I think just just as the foundations were being put down, I was still riding, you know, a bike like a BMX, like most kids do. Yeah. Um, but wanted a skateboard, and obviously that Christmas I got my skateboard, and um, they started putting the floor in properly and um, finishing parts off. Uh, so that was yeah, definitely my favourite. And then I can't remember a time that sort of skate park wasn't there. No, <laughs> no me neither. See, I I remember. Yeah, and I, I kind of think that my brother's kind of the cause that it got kick-started, because they called it the Millennium Project. Um, Were actually, they the skateboarding? Or? No. Uh, my One of my brothers was a, an inline skateboarder, uh, uh, inline skater, not skateboarder, sorry. Um, but before it was a skate park, it was, uh, well, it was a landfill, and it was just waste, wasted space. Um, since I've been a baby, I don't know when it was closed as uh, a tip, but um, yeah, it was just wasteland and there was bids to try and do something with it and develop the land and um, there used to be some garages in one corner of it and... Um, so it was like just a fly tip spot? Yeah, sort of yeah, thing. yeah. But yeah, my, uh, basically my brother got pretty badly injured down there and I think um, because of that they had to just say we need to do something with this because yeah. it's just people chucking shit there and, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. and it causing problems so they yeah they decided that, to ruin it with a skate park yeah yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah bring a bunch of yeah. thugs like Gordon out of their shit. <laughs> yeah but, but from that you know yeah they built what they built and then they got more money to uh, improve it which they did and it kind of grew with my abilities as well so that was really cool because it started off as a beginner skate park and then became an intermediate skate park and they're still adding to it they've added uh, another little street section recently yeah um, but it was kind of a bit sort of like burnside at one point like a sort of hardcore locals only like yeah they were nice or at least when i started going they were nice but it was a lot more like locals only you like you know what i mean or it seemed to be that yeah, way yeah i think outside not not many people kind of traveled there um i don't think i think it just had a really hardcore local following yeah yeah, yeah, yeah man. which which is funny because um yeah and it was gnarly like the skaters who skated it were gnarly i remember there being like um like a really big wooden drop in yeah there. so so a uh, a, a local uh, BMXer, professional BMXer called uh, Martin Tamlin. Um, he, I believe, he lived in Saltash anyway, and he, um, yeah, built a big volcano, big wooden volcano. It was about seven, no, six foot, five, six foot volcano or something. But it had, was painted green to protect the wood because it was wooden. Yeah. And it just got moved around and made different obstacles and yeah. put on the banks to make like an invert thing and yeah. Um, and that's again coming back to the locals they just supported it and wanted to improve it and again he's still actually doing stuff today that was like 12 years ago or something he built that but even today um you know there's places on top of the ramp where puddles form and stuff so he's drilled holes through so it drains and um the floor has deteriorated over oh, time and, and the, the now, hard, hardcore is coming through and you know i used to roll 62 mil wheels so it, yeah, I didn't yeah. notice it as much but now I've been skateboarding less and um, the wheels are getting doing a bit smaller. yeah my wheels are a lot smaller now yeah, and I feel no. it every time I go down there 
um, and it's a shame to see because I used to love it. I used to cruising around and um, yeah, he's he's still sort of bidding and fighting to try and get uh, some sort of industrial polisher or something to smooth the floor yeah, up. But um, it'd be it'd be awesome it to see be that. Well worth doing, yeah, and even though it's deteriorating, and you know we've all grown up and we skateboard less or ride less, and there's still heart in it to want to protect it and. Um, another local skate is also quite a big part of that works for Plymouth City Council so he's always peering over the shoulder of the councillors and seeing what's happening with it all so it's um, pretty cool assuming um, the answer to that question would be salt air skate but salt mill salt mill sorry yeah. blabbing um, on what about street spot if any <clears throat> um don't think I've really got a favourite street spot a street uh, obstacle just a nice stair set. Yeah, man. There's yeah. nothing like a good, yeah. perfect stair set, is yeah. there? And they're so hard to come by. Yeah. And not yeah. Stop it, I think it? because, yeah, so, you know, you would have been breaking into schools and stuff to skate the non-skate stop at steps. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, it, it one, one stair set in particular, a nice little five stair, just a decent size and a uh, decent run up as well, but not a great, not a great roll out, but um, yeah, no street spot in particular because I was more of a park skater, I suppose. I just went from. Oh, I've seen you skate the streets though. King yeah. of the uh, king of the king what? of salt. Ash. King of salt. Ash. <laughs> Not yeah. king of the mill. For yeah, some but th reason. that's it. You go to these spots like for a little bit, and you get bored pretty quickly because you've only got a limited number of tricks. And um, I think you kind of almost don't want to tread on people's toes as well. So if there was always a lot of us if we were going from spot to spot yeah. because um, it was just that time that the skate park grew is when there was like quite a big number of skaters around my age. Yeah. We just used to go to the same spots and uh, I suppose if someone was doing something, you didn't want to step on their toes and try it as well yeah, necessarily yeah, yeah. and get it first. I think it's if a bit if, it, if they were trying it now, first, it? yeah. Like, yeah, I think there was a lot more etiquette in regards to that before. Like, yeah. now, if you you want to do a trick that someone else is doing, you're like, all right, let's battle for it and people yeah. are like, keen for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean? like, pushing each other, definitely. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I, th I think that all depends on the type of people you're around. I was obviously a lot younger as well. Yeah. Um, so, I think you kind of, yeah, just have that etiquette. So Salt Mill, favourite skate park. What about your favourite skateboard trick? Uh, do love a musket flip. <laughs> <laughs> um, or if it's a park trick, it's definitely like a tweaked out melon or a, a Tupney Indie. Nice. Yeah, just fun, quirky so tricks. Front, a front side flip <laughs> or a melon? <laughs> yeah. For favourite trick? Yeah. Well, well, used to be a... Um, going back to the hipster tricks, I used to be able to sproin never that, heard of it that was that was fun it's kind of <laughs> like a um, a pressured fast plant tray flip thing yeah, yeah yeah it's weird but they're really cool I saw it on a I think it was a black label DVD um, the one with the barcode on it it was like blue with red barcode I forget the name of the, the video itself but um Man, I, I slow mode that thing so many times to see exactly yeah, how he did it. Man. Went outside and did it. Learning tricks at old school. Yeah, but since my trucks have gotten wider and my boards got wider as well, I, it, it just doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, um, yeah, and smaller wheels. You used to skate a really skinny board, didn't you? Like really skinny? Nah, I don't. I used to have like a seven, seven five maybe. No, seven five probably. And oh, then I got really given. Skinny. You like can't a, get skinny. <clears> no, yeah, but but I was again like 11 yeah, 12 yeah. and then i got given an eight and i kind of went up to it after that it was, it was a second hand board so after the eight i went up went up down again but up from what i was on to like seven seven five yeah, um and then after that is yeah seven seven five for a while and then i got an eight and then an eight two five and it's eight two five for yeah full life now but um yeah, yeah. you can pop those though like, yeah like, I, I really can but i think having the higher wheels and i always had high trucks as well that helped with uh yeah all yeah, of that but yeah, i think for real. i still like the height but i've gotten smaller wheels so i'm a little bit lower <coughs> See, I trucks are still wide levels. i just feel like i'm on stilts or something on highs it's real weird man. Uh, i quite like it can you tell me what does skateboarding mean to you um <clears throat> i think I don't think it means one thing in particular. I think that uh, 
it's, it's more of where I am now. I think without skateboarding, I wouldn't be where I am now. It, it kind of gave me discipline and structure in life and, and a routine almost as well. It teaches you failure, which is a really hard thing to learn. And skateboarding teaches you it so well, I think, doesn't it? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? It teaches you that you can just keep grinding at something and you will be good at it. Yeah, yeah. It's just practice, yeah, and showing that, you know, effort does pay off. Um, yeah, it's it's... Because I was skateboarding, I had that focus, and I remember, you know, people were growing up and uh, getting girlfriends and started doing drugs. You know, like we all smoke a bit, but you know, yeah, it's man. kind of people going to the next stage and things like that. And I never, um, I never got to that point from it. Uh, it kept me grounded, and yeah, you know, I, I wasn't. <laughs> well, I wasn't interested in girls or anything until I was like fourteen, fifteen, yeah. because I had skateboarding. That was that was my um, your thing. Yeah, and you kept start me getting, entertained and start getting like weirder haircuts or more edgy haircuts. <laughs> wow! Well, in that hair. Listen, I had like a bowl you had a cut. Full on ma- afro for like a bit, didn't you? Well, I had like thing. a bowl cut for years, and then my brothers kind of cut my hair off, um, and I just kind of. I wasn't growing it, but it was. It would be like, you look like buzz cut. Fucking... It would be buzz cut, and then um, it, it would just grow, and I'd just be like pushing my hair back without any product or anything, and it was just fluffy on top of my head. <laughs> What's I still push Stevens it back now. Called? Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but without Screech the curls. <laughs> so I don't know how it stayed up there, but it did. Pure really? magic. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it. it yeah, the haircuts developed with time. <laughs> Girlfriends, actually. Yeah. But uh, I had some weird skunk thing going on at one point. It was all a bit choppy. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely kept me grounded, kept me... Uh, kept me from, from getting into negative stuff, I think. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, man. Although, although and I'm, I'm going off topic here, I'm sorry, but... Skateboarding and weed has always gone hand in hand, and and yeah, did has. did they for you? Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I was smoking it really young actually, but I think because I started so young as well, I got out out of it sooner. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so where I was coming out of it is where other people, because they're older, they're kind of braver and going into these other drugs and you know they, they're getting jobs so they can pay for them and things like that and yeah, yeah, yeah. um Spoke, yeah, yeah. yeah but it, it yeah like i said it did it did go hand in hand but i never i was never really stoned whilst i was skateboarding and always what, focused yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 and it was kind of like an evening thing i suppose or um when you couldn't skate after rainy school, day yeah yeah, 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 yeah man. definitely definitely more so like that um and yeah, the one time I was, st- <laughs> and th- there'll be people that know exactly when this was and who was there. But the one, the one time I was stoned and I skated, I broke my arm pretty badly. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I, that kind of put me off then. So, yeah. Um, cool. Why do you skateboard? Well, I suppose a lot, a lot of the answer to that's in what I said a minute ago. It just kind of kept me grounded, give me focus. Um, but ultimately, it's just fun. So you um, s- so you skate now because of the thing skating's taught you, and 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 obviously you know skating's for life. Once yeah, you're in, yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah. never out. But no. but what? Why do you skate in the first place? Then what? What was it that that drew you to it, or what? Because yeah, in our in the pilot episode, <clears throat> go back and watch it or listen to it if you haven't. Um, <laughs> Luke was talking about how because he we used to just skate on the very odd occasion as you like no or whatever like we a kid has a skateboard. Uh, well, we used to go out together, and, and but we were never that good. We, right. Yeah, and yeah. it'd be like once every like three months. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. And then all of a sudden, life changed, and then we took skating on more seriously. Did anything like that happen to you, or was no, it just I um, because you live so close to the skate park anyway? There wasn't uh, a lot more to do. Yeah, actually, because you mentioned that, kind of puts it all into perspective. But I, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I didn't have a lot growing up. You know, um, <clears throat> I remember, like I said, I got my skateboard for Christmas, and I remember growing up asking for something for Christmas, and my mum would always do the best she could. 
like uh, there was these things called like dragonflies, where you like pull yeah, this ripcord man. and they fly up, and I wanted them, and I didn't get them, but I got like a budget version. Yeah, yeah. So obviously I was grateful because I still got that. Yeah, um, yeah. But it was never, I never got the thing I wanted like exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I remember this. What? Yeah, the one year, so two thousand one, it would have been. I was just. Yeah, I think because the skate park was being developed, like it was not ready yet, but um, so what that was kind of first, edged me on. What was your first skate park, skateboard? Sorry, was it? So it wasn't. It wasn't a branded one or no. anything. I assume, thinking back about it, that it was uh, maybe from like one you'd get from like a market or something. Toys like R Us board or like yeah. Yeah, yeah a bit, a bit of. better. I think I had, I had metal trucks on it, so it was a bit better than say like a Toys R Us one, and it had. Yeah. Um, ABEC, maybe like ABEC ones, <laughs> if ever there was such a thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was. I, I remember just seeing one in, say, the Argos catalogue, and I was just like, oh, I want. And I think it was listed as fishtail skateboard. Yeah. I was like, I want a fishtail skateboard, not a dirt board, like that was next <laughs> to it. Yeah, just yeah. making sure that one. Yeah, um, like a complete for kids sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, yeah, I remember that Christmas. I, I I saw it wrapped up, and I was like, I'm "Sure, that's for me." But um, <laughs> my brothers and sisters were convinced convinced me that it wasn't. Yeah. And everybody opened everything apart from me until that. Um, and I opened it, and that that was it. It had like a, a alien graphic on the bottom. And Paul, we can hear you saying that. That's I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. It had like an alien graphic on the bottom, and it had that really awful grip tape that comes off yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, and then you just Turns got black like, stuff just, yeah just yeah. <laughs> yeah I remember yeah. and it had like the little skinny metal trucks on it and um, <laughs> I remember waxing the bottom of my board with a crayon so I could do board slides <laughs> <laughs> no so you ever use like tea lights and that like robbing your mum's tea lights no to, like, see I started off with like crayons and then we used to go up the pound it's shop and we'd buy a like candle cool. and we had this tin of uh, it was called hair shine but it was just coconut oil, essentially. Mm. And we melted that into this candle and it made some pretty epic works, to be mm. honest. Come and see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next question. So, you mentioned something to me like in the car earlier that made me realise that I'm wrong about this, but my last and final question is why did you never have a job before your current job, your career, at the moment? Why, why, why were you... Why were you, like, unemployed? And it was almost as if you were waiting... Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I had jobs, but not careers, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, I you mentioned some labour and like uh, yeah. which I never knew about. But then, I'm, mind like, you, I remember you saying like I'm getting like so and so money from so and so for just helping them take yeah, this yeah. out. It's like cash and hand sort of. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, a lot yeah. of cash and hand work. It was things like I, um, I did a bit of like landscape gardening for basically my friends' parents. Um, I. It's going to be noisy. <laughs> I did some landscape gardening for my friend's parents, I did some maintenance at their pub, I, um, I did some property, worked with a property developer for a while, basically as a labourer. Um, but yeah, they were just, it was, I, I was out of school at like 16 and I, I didn't go on to college, although I had um, an A at GCSE in art, I didn't realise then the potential of art as a career and how many different careers that actually involve it mm. um, so I never took it on in college or university or anything like that um, and I, yeah I always wanted to do something with art but I never realised there were all these other careers out there um, until I, I got my first tattoo at just before I turned 19 and it took me about a year to realise actually there's a lot more to tattooing than just you know, that's black right. outline and block colour. Yeah, even though that's yeah. like one of my favourite things to tattoo is like traditional kind of stuff. It's um, a lot more to it than you think. As I was naive then, um, and yeah, so it took me that year to realise that I could do that as a career, and uh, yeah, it just kind of stemmed from that really. Do you think skateboarding played a role in your lack of employment or lack of stable income? Uh. Maybe, but actually I think it kind of gave me a new look on what kind of career I could do. So straight after school, 
it's the first thing I did was working with a property developer and I wanted to do like a carpentry apprenticeship. Yeah. Reason for that being ramp building. Yeah, 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 nice. Yeah, so um, it kind of helped you. Yeah, in terms yeah, it of actually, yeah. So I, I was sixteen. I was just yeah, but I did all those careers and a bit of labouring for like um, council as well. Yeah. Um, they were all quite close together. It was like out of one into the next, and then I did that. Um, I think I was eighteen. My last job that was like labouring, so two years in and out of four jobs or something. Um, yeah. Couldn't have been very regular because I never remember you fucking working. Yeah. Well, I, I, I didn't know you that well then, though, did I? Yeah, I, mean, that's the first I think one. I was about I was about eighteen when when we met. Seven, seventeen, seventeen, I think you were. Okay. It would have been live wire, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you came to play bass. So, um, but uh, I, yeah. ju I just want to run over the questions that I've asked and and tell you back the answers that we remember. So, your favourite kind of skateboarding, park skateboarding. Yeah. How long have you been skateboarding? Sixteen years. Your favourite skate park, salt mill. Your favourite skate spot or obstacle would be a stair set. Your favourite trick, you said a frontside flip or a melon, a tweaked out melon. What does skateboarding mean to you? It means a lot of different things, but it's something that has kept you grounded and really helped you throughout life. And you never had a job before your current job, but skateboarding actually helped you want to gain employment. Now. What I have asked you is a series of questions that you've been asked before and what we want to do now is just play you the video in which you've been asked these questions and see how the answers that I you've just video, answered so. have just compared to what you've just said That's funny. because some of them are a little bit different and um, I'm, I'm interested to see how they are different so uh, are we going to roll it on this or do you want to roll it on that? Play. We'll roll it on this so we can show you. I watched this the other day as well. <laughs> <laughs> it was so hard to find man. I, I've literally spent the second part of my day today just trying to find this fucking video. I could have told you where it was. Can <laughs> <laughs> you see that? I know one of the answers is right. <laughs> <laughs> Skateboarder, so I prefer <laughs> such a bad answer. I've been skateboarding for about eight years. Jesus. So shit. Who's that couple of marching? You should cut down on your pork life, mate. Get some exercise. Favorite skate park? It's on now. No good to take two. My favorite trick. Is probably a melon. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's that called? Probably jail. Skateboarding means to me probably my life. It's Your life? My life. <laughs> Your whole life. <laughs> well, it was then, you know, I didn't have a kid. I didn't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. You were at the skate park school. I've got nothing better to do. Same thing I'm good at. Only thing you're good at? Yeah. How does that compare? Yeah. To yeah. so what you said? Yeah. To why do you skate? Yeah. yeah. I had a lot of anxiety when I was younger, so I think it was kind of... Yeah, the answer did come to It's the only thing I had confidence in. Yeah, it's a good thing. No one wanted to employ you because you're a skateboarder. Get <laughs> into this video. Yeah. Well, um... <laughs> Yeah, I think it's quite quite interesting actually. Yeah, like I say, I think I had a lot of anxieties then, and I did feel that because I enjoyed skateboarding, and um, I always had positive feedback from it, from other skateboarders and stuff, telling me, oh, you know, you're good or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I always found it hard to take a compliment anyway. But I think I knew the, I was of a standard that you know I enjoyed it anyway. So I felt like that was the only thing I get at. It was the only skill I had at that time. Um, yeah, yeah. How how old were you then? Uh, if it said eight years then, I would have been... 19? Yeah, like 19. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, because you, you still were at the skate park a lot when when we first met. And then obviously... Yeah, man, I remember when you learned how to air out of, like, a ramp. Something. Salt, salt mill, yeah. Was it the big one? I think so. 
I, I really, love that. Yeah, yeah. I really stoked about it. I only did it a few times. Yeah, straight, remember, up <laughs> straight up and down. Straight, well, 180 when it front yeah, side, yeah. but straight up and down again. That was about the time that I sort of met you, yeah. Cool. I didn't know anybody knew about that. <laughs> yeah. I, um... Yeah, yeah, I was still skateboarding a lot more then, definitely, because I had a lot less responsibilities. I didn't have a child or a wife. I had girlfriends, but um, because I didn't have a job or a child or a wife, <laughs> I had a lot more free time, definitely. Um, yeah, and, I remember. And, and the only thing that stopped me from skateboarding is maybe, you know, having your domestics... Yeah, things like yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, I remember some of those. Yeah. I remember um, you kicking a mobile phone into the orbit. Best, best and memory it ever. Falling <laughs> to the ground, and as it hit the ground, I'm not even sure if it had touched the ground. As it was already underneath. As well, it got it? rolled over by a car. It landed underneath the wheel of a car. It was spectacular. Just no, no regard for your phone. <laughs> Fuck this phone. You just picked up the SIM card and walked away. <laughs> the sim, wasn't the SIM card twisted though? I'm know. done with this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah, I nearly, nearly had a phone off the bridge as well. I um, I remember you having Bella and being at the skate park quite a lot for less than. Y y it wasn't your first choice of place to be. No, it definitely was not. But I remember you being at the skate park all the time while yeah. having Bella. By, by, by yourself and I um she was cared for uh, just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. put yeah. that out there she wasn't just left yeah but yeah yeah bless her but um yeah I hurt my shin but um oh, I do have some more skateboarding related questions but they're unrelated to that video so you did pretty well you, 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 your ones about skateboarding how you the, your favourite places, your favourite tricks, they're still the same yeah. after eight years from that video. It's nostalgia. Going live. Yeah. yeah, man. So, you know, and even with some time off skateboarding, because there was a, a few years in there where you probably didn't skate. Yeah, there's, you know, again, going back to, like, relationships and, and, and domestics and stuff like that, you kind of... There's been times where you almost feel obliged not to go uh, skateboarding, and... There was definitely some large gaps in there, you know, three, four, five, six months at a time. Yeah, man. Um, you still always go back to it, though, don't you? Yeah, you like, I, I don't think I've been skateboarding properly since... Probably Cardiff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. And, and before that... I, was, I haven't was seen you in a while. We we maybe just Kind of after just long. just little sessions here and there and it's S quite big gaps. Like I'm trying to think when we would have last went before that. I think it would have been prime, but it would have probably been the last. Well, it couldn't have been last winter. But this it like maybe two years ago. No, it would have been Truro maybe was, the time before that that we'd seen you that we've skated with you. Maybe two two years ago or a year ago, winter last year, maybe that I got my consolidated board that I've got now yeah man because I've had the same board for a year yeah man and it's still in pretty good condition yeah man um, before well, you that you gave I, me a deck that you had for a really long time that was in great condition yeah the one that I was using me. before was that like one a, what was it a death board was it was um, it was no you gave no, passport yeah yeah the, yeah with man. the geisha on the bottom I don't know what a geisha yeah. is oh it's a Japanese or Chinese yeah Japanese lady um, yeah a friend actually bought that for me for maybe my 20 Second birthday. Who was that? That was Matt. Matt Water. Matt yeah, Water, he, he good skater for, as well. Um, he skates for Five Borrow. Yeah, man. Yeah. He had a clip in Civic Days. I remember that yeah. on the on the um, pavilions banks, which I've I tried skating. Re so hard, yeah, it, hard yeah. man. You have to go fast. Yeah, he's living it up in London now. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, right. doing really well for himself. Got a lot of artwork on his body by yours truly as well, yeah. right? Yeah, it's like yeah, a, yeah. a work of your art. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of trust. He actually um, helped me progress in that as well because he kind of, he already had a couple of tattoos and he, he's quite a high standard mm -hmm. um, and he wouldn't let me tattoo him for ages while I was learning. Yeah. And I think th when he decided I could tattoo him when I was good enough, um, yeah, kind of really boosted me then and just, he, like he gave me a, an insight to look at precision of work and stuff and every yeah. day every tattoo just kind of 
yeah, it's, it's the finer details that <coughs> matter to make it look neat and tidy, you know. Yeah, whilst still on the subject of skateboarding, I'm assuming you've, you've asked your, all of your skateboard related questions. I have a few more skateboard and related mm-hmm. questions, but you fire away if it, if it takes mine away. Just because it's a, a natural transition. Um, does the skateboard influence your, your tattooing at all? Um, or has it ever done? Like, it, I th- to start with, it, it, it it's what because of skateboarding is how I found tattooing, because the guy at the skate park's sister was the person who tattooed me, but oh. I would I would never have is become that the a person with the chest piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would never have become acquainted with that um, that person if it wasn't at the skate park, and he had got a tattoo from his sister recently, and um, we kind of thought, oh yeah, we'll get something funny that'd be a laugh and. Yeah. What did you get? Was it the penguin? The penguin. On my yeah, yeah, yeah. And then two yeah. weeks later, got another one on the other ankle. <laughs> you used to always be on your grip tape as well. When did that stop? <clears throat> yeah, man. Um, well, that that was yeah, because I kind of had that on my grip tape and then got the penguin tattooed on me because it was kind of you didn't a need seasonal it on grip tape anymore. Yeah, well, I don't know. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, su- I suppose I lost the stencil, but um, I had. Well, that, that's when I was having like you know four boards a year plus, so I'd have like a seasonal one. So the one I've got on my ankle was. Must have been the board I had from winter, beating January or whatever. Yeah, man. Um, because he's got a little bubble hat on, and then I've got one on my left ankle, which's got holding a little ice cream, because it was a summer one. Um, yeah, I suppose I kind of. Yeah, I just gave up. I used to cut lines and stuff into my grip all the time, and that was kind of a substitute for cutting lines and. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I hear there's that something now. about it. <laughs> Is that not what you were saying? <laughs> a substitute for cutting lines into my grip tape. Oh uh, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, I guess it just kind of faded out. I, I, I got coloured bolts. So that's probably what it is. I had a coloured bolt in the front of my board, so I didn't have the lines to need to but sort of have that bolt. instant. Yeah. Is that something? Bullshit. Is that something that you've seen come about? Like, was that not a thing? Was that that did that become a thing in the time that you were doing skateboarding? Um, I remember seeing them, and I had friends that had them, like the Enjoy ones in particular, where they were like, what was it like eight different coloured bolts or something? They were all different, weren't they? Yeah, man. Or was it four different colours and four black ones? Or yeah, something? Maybe, I don't remember. Yeah. Um, so it was about, but um, yeah, I suppose it just depends how you use them, doesn't it? And uh, yeah. I, I actually don't use a coloured bolt, but it seems that like everyone does now. I yeah, think that's why I, I don't do it. I just yeah. go for all black, and you, you'll always know something about your board that makes you know it's the front. Do you know yeah. what I mean? The, well, normally the graphic underneath. Or the fucking well, or the chip feels. that you get on top, like yeah. or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Nice D-lam. But yeah, you start to like learn the board the amount of time you've had it or whatever. Yeah, I don't think it's necessary. I just, I just kind of like the oh. instant. Why is this camera not not doing that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why this camera's doing it. <coughs> Camera trouble. Yeah, fucking story of our lives. Go on, I'll let you two continue. We'll be back very shortly. Cool. Um, so, if we maybe go into to tattooing. So, it, at the beginning, it did sort of play a part in, in influencing you with, with, was it artwork or just getting into tattoos? Yeah, no, I don't think it was the art, uh, it didn't influence me for like artwork or anything like that, but I think uh, obviously skateboarding and tattooing kind of go hand in hand as well, it's uh, almost one of the, um, the stereotypes, isn't it? M- music, tattoos, skateboarding, mm-hmm. um, but there, there was there was a guy I used to skate with who was pretty heavily tattooed, um, but it, I don't yeah I don't think it sort of influenced me or I looked at it and thought oh I could do that or I like that or um, I think that the only sort of connection between the two was the fact that someone who was at the skate park was the reason I got my first tattoo and it, it kind of stemmed from that I think purely a passion for art is what continued that so at what point was it that you um you thought i, I want to start learning how to, to tattoo people um it was about a year after my first lesson yeah i yeah. remember that happening <laughs> 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 yeah it was about a year after my first tattoo i 
I, I wanted to learn and um, the person who was tattooing me kind of helped me um, get into it um, and yeah it, that was it really uh, and I think it was kind of using a bit of birthday money and stuff like that put my first kit together got into it the wrong way because um, that was not how I was advised necessarily but um, they kind of sold it to me that you can work in a studio and um, it not be very successful and then um, you just sat twiddling your thumbs but paying all these overheads so to work from home was possibly the best thing to do because you don't have the overheads um, but yeah ev eventually I uh, got offered a job in the studio and then I was like, because I, I dedicated myself to it, I wanted to be good at what I was doing. Um, and How long did it take from going from from starting to tattoo people to getting a job in a studio? Is that a long process? Uh, uh, I think being self-taught is a lot longer. <laughs> yeah. um, it was about a year and a half, I think. Um, it felt like you got the you got it pretty yeah, quickly. It, quite quickly. It, it, it yeah. is it is quite quick, I suppose. But then because maybe because I, I applied myself so much rather than <clears throat> I know that there's people out there that think oh tattooing's cool I'll do that because it's cool or uh, it's easy money or mm. um, you know whether you can it's quite a big subject in the tattoo industry at the minute whether you can swap sex for tattoos and things like that <laughs> yeah um, and I think a lot of people do it for the wrong reasons like that rather than the passion and the want to do better and um, what, what, of course you can swap sex for tattoos though like you can take whatever you want as payment surely it's a, you know, maybe you've got a shop. <laughs> yeah but this this is the thing you know like that it's being discussed in the industry at the moment it's just there are people that are in that position and maybe it's it's I don't know. It's almost like a form of prostitution, isn't it? Yes. It's like it's it's a trade for sex. So it is like it's business in itself. But um, instead of you paying them money, you're paying them with a tattoo that they would have paid you for anyway. So it all works out yeah. to what? be the same sort of thing. But I'm really it's, it's kind of almost taking advantage of the uh, your position of trust that you're in. Um, so can I pay for your tattoos in hand jobs and blow jobs or not? If you offer, me, if you offer me, and yeah. I'm and I'm not, you know, suggesting it or anything like that, then I suppose it's the other way around, isn't it? Because yeah. then it's like I'm not in the position of you're power. not abusing the power. Yeah, no, yeah. that's it. Like, and I, if I'd known that, mate, I'd be I'd be tatted up. I'd I'd look like little poop. <laughs> I'd have I'd have many handies. <laughs> yeah. But I'm really curious to, to what what would be the correct way? Because I feel it. You, I don't feel you could walk into a shop and be like, I want to start tattooing people, can I have a, an apprenticeship? Because you've got to have that. Surely you've got to show them some tattoos to be able to get that job. Not tattoos, no. It's actually I'm worse to show someone yeah. tattoos because then they get the idea that you've got these bad habits and things like that. Yeah. Um, but I suppose, you're happy to just tattoo someone's skin. And it's yeah, like a no, shit the, the correct way would be to walk into a shop and show them maybe a portfolio of drawings or... Um, has anyone ever came into your shop and, and tattooed? Yeah, a few people, but... Um, is that how the new guy got the job? He was already tattooing at another studio. Uh, so he was, um, but he was He was. scouted? Yeah, yeah. To, to a degree. But he was he was going to be leaving that shop anyway, and he would have just left it then after that. But um, yeah. uh, there was sort of a position available in our, in our shop where chairs are rotated and stuff and um, it, it worked enough for him to be able to carry on doing it uh, and he's a good artist but um, yeah it's to take, take a portfolio in of drawings and things like that but the problem and the mistake that a lot of people make is they do tattoo designs and like typical tattoo yeah. designs um, you know even copying google images whether they trace them or whether they just copy them you know it's been done uh, it's almost like you should look at a range of things like that and then develop your own or just whether there's some other drawings and you know you can learn to draw a tattooable design but um yeah because one thing you do you can't teach you can't teach someone where to put the shade in you know yeah, yeah. one thing um, you do really well is is sort of creating a tattoo giving you ideas and you drawing some run is insane and something beyond I, I can ever imagine so it's, un it's understanding what makes a tattooable design and what's just a drawing mm. or what's you know you can still put that stuff on people's skin but it's fundamentals of tattoo and what makes it look strong and because when I I don't know if it, you find it annoying or not but whenever I get a tattoo from you 
I, I, I must, I'll just give you like some ideas and be like, just draw me something. <laughs> I, that, that's better, you know, sometimes people can be too specific and you can uh, almost not mm. argue but debate that it's not going to look good as a tattoo yeah. design. Having an idea and being able to have that um, creative um, freedom uh, to design that tattoo is better than um, being told I want this like this and this like this because then you're not an artist you're just you know just a tattooer just like doing a just yeah, yeah. just putting which a lot of people don't mind I suppose is no it, but do you get people often who come with you with a, a drawing and say I want this tattooed on me yeah normally like traced off Google or something like that but um, or like people that most, design most, their own tattoos yeah. and stuff yeah Mo most of the time though we say like um, we'll have to like alter this to make it more tattooable blah blah or the spiel and, um, and I suppose that's your bread and butter yeah major majority of the time they're happy with that um, because they understand they're not you know the professional or things like that so um, welcome back Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have another camera battery? Uh, no, I don't have another camera battery. No is it dead? Is it? Fuck that camera. Yeah. It's Who's dead. is that? That's your camera. I'm sure I tried to charge that up. And I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's dead. That's not a problem. So sorry for the wide angle. You can edit it. You'll make it good. <laughs> yeah, we'll sort something out. What did I miss? Anything good? Uh, Any no, confessions? Not a boring shite. No, nothing that's going to make the tabloids <laughs> tomorrow. No. Nobody wants to hear it anyway. We'll, cu <laughs> we'll cut it all out. Uh, annoyingly, all my notes are on my iPhone, which we're using as a oh, camera angle that hasn't failed man. yet. But I'll try, and, I'll try and pull some off the uh, off the dome. Yeah, unless man. Unless you want to go back to skateboarding for a bit. I've got a few questions um, related to skateboarding. So the first one I'm I'm really interested in, and that's why I want to ask. I want to know what the best thing that you think you've ever done in skateboarding, be it like literally like you just know like that was the best thing or whether like it's just something that maybe you couldn't do now that's like peak, way beyond. A peak of your skateboarding career. Yeah, the thing that if you go, so what What have you done in skateboarding? What is it? God. Um, and it can't be. Because you've not really done any sort of video parts or anything like that really. Which there I is not some online. Really when I, there used to be one like from years mm. ago. That There's the King of Salt Ash ones, which oh. I've seen both of, but I've you've only got one. a clip or two in there. There used to be one where I was like. I've seen one where you do like a, a manual for about 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to have pretty good balance. But um, I don't know. There's like. Some tricks I have that are just like favourites, but. um. I'm sure there is things that I've been mega stoked about doing. Um, I'm pretty sure there's there's a gap that I've done that I don't think anybody else has done on a skateboard. I'm pretty sure it's been done on a BMX. Um, and just talking like an ollie? Yeah, it was rough at the top and rough at the bottom, so it's kind of not a lot you can do with it, I suppose. Um, that was pretty big. <clears throat> um, uh, I don't think that... I, not one in particular thing stands out. No. Really, no. Um, trick wise, but I used to like do this kickflip indie, which is pretty cool. Um, we we spoke earlier about doing a straight up, like an a, a, just a front side air, but um. Like on a quarter. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 No. But um, quite a big quarter as well, so I was pretty chuffed with that. Yeah, um, man. Yeah, I think I think sort of goals that I had at the time was just going bigger or higher taking what you had and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just like doors yeah man just, just simple things though like um, le just the first time you actually land Aaron over a hip um, mm, yeah. and then you go bigger and bigger um, or even the fun stuff that you do like stack up boards and jump over them over a jump box and learn to manual for 25 minutes yeah <laughs> that kind of thing yeah man um, no that's fair yeah, progressive. I don't, I don't think there's you, anything. You one weren't thing. a big street skater, were you? You were no. a park skater, so it all happened at the park, and it, uh, yeah, I know yeah, what you mean. Yeah. The obstacles were all the same every day. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, that's yeah. a fair shout. There must there must be something where I've I've been somewhere and done something. It's a hard question to answer on the spot. I don't yeah. think I can answer it right I, now. I mean, that's it. So many years as well, and it's all all being fucking and yeah, then, bonged away. Yeah, and it's quite <laughs> yeah, and it's it's quite sparse now as well. Obviously, like I say, as it's gotten into later years, the the gaps between sessions even are are quite long. So. Oh, it's crazy, isn't it? It yeah. like makes you wonder how you even have any tricks yeah. anymore, like all together. Do you know mm. what I mean? But I um I'm actually starting to feel like uncomfortable on my board, like again now. So like Spare. where I'm like 
or I'm a bit scared of it again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, are you at that stage or do you just jump on your board and it's like putting I, I on? I was at that stage where I had the biggest gap and it must have been like nine months to a year yeah. or something. It was pretty big gap and um, I got a new board and new shoes and it was just, it didn't feel right. Um, it, like the board wasn't sticking to my feet anymore, but I seem to be okay with it now. Like everything's a little bit sketchy to start with because you just forget for a brief moment, but um, the longer you skate that day, you kind of get more comfortable back into it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if we um, ask you that same question, but in regards to tattooing, has there been like a point in your, your tattoo career yet, which has been like a pinnacle of it? Because you are a multi award winning tattoo artist. Can we call you tattoo artist? Is that tattoo artist, tattooist, tattooer? I think I think tattoo it depends it depends on You how actually told me a thing recently about how is you fo- no no about how you finally feel like you can call yourself a tattoo artist and you felt uncomfortable about doing so before. So what what was it Did that I? Yeah, you you were saying that, or at least you were saying about (laughs) setting your sights to being more of a tattoo artist than a tattooer. So what's the difference and what made you define yourself as a tattoo artist over a tattooer? Um, I think it's maybe a skill level or not even necessarily a skill level, but an understanding um, of the materials and why what does what. You do a lot of uh, a lot of custom work these yeah, days as well. Yeah, Very do. good custom work <clears throat> as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I think going back to this this stages thing as well. Uh, I think um, you hit so so many points. Um, so you'll do a tattoo and you'll be really stoked about it, and you feel like you've kind of grown a level because it's maybe that little bit cleaner, or you've learnt something during that tattoo that you can then apply to other tattoos to make them uh, equally as clean or. Uh, yeah, just things like that, and and you'll get that little boost every now and again, and and you'll go up a level. Even down to the design work, you might try something new. Like, uh, for example, I used to do rope just, to, <clears throat> and it'd always be like smooth lines. Whereas now I'm putting like jack more jagged kinks in it and things like that, and it just adds more character to the design. Um, and I feel it just it improves your work again like steps it up but, um so yeah so tattooing similar there's there's no one integral point i don't think i think it's um lots of just like skateboarding lots of yeah lots of stages you kind of do something and you get that little bit more confidence and, and you grow gradually yeah. so on the back of that then what is the worst tattoo you've ever done that you wished you didn't do and you don't have to name names or go into specifics if it saves it he has what, one look at the smile on his face what, <laughs> what is the tattoo you wish you never did I you lay really in bed at it. night thinking oh, why did I do that the only um, the the only reason I know is because somebody asked me this recently <laughs> and I had all day to think about it and um, it there's was, that many yeah <laughs> <laughs> No, because I, I never did one that was like, I wish I never did that kind of thing, you know? Um, obviously, there's ones that aren't so great when I first started out and, like, nerves took over. Um, They're on yourself mainly, though, aren't they? <laughs> no, actually. <laughs> it's no, it's, it's not one of those. Because you're, you're not that nervous tattooing yourself, but it's literally, like, I'm talking the first two, I remember, I, I three think it tattoos. Have been your first, but it was, like, on someone's back. Quite, quite yeah, it was, it was bigger than it should have been. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't the full back or anything like that. It was my niece's dad, so he was family, and he kind of... Knew what he was getting yeah, himself yeah, into. Yeah, yeah. Knew what risk he was yeah, taking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does he still and, have it? Well, and he knew I... He, <laughs> well, of course he's it, still got did it. Did it wash yeah, off? <laughs> yeah, he still has it. I haven't seen him for a while, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he still has it, and I, I added to it, like... F- quite a few years back now but I did add to it and um, there's there's still work that needs done to is it, there a picture of it anywhere no I don't think so no lucky no, for you oh that's a shame I'd have loved <laughs> um, to have shown it <laughs> but yeah the, wor- the worst one I did wasn't bad in quality it was just a bizarre design and like we were talking about earlier people bringing in their ideas yeah. and saying I want this and us being like oh I don't know if it worked great as a design and it was at that point so I just got into a studio so I was kind of I didn't have the uh, the cojones to sort of say like no, no or this would be better or yeah I, I'd kind of go like Are you sure but not fight yeah, my corner yeah, enough. Yeah. Um, so this guy had 
that a bunch of square yin yangs on his arm. <laughs> 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 and one of them was rectangular <laughs> because he, he didn't want them. Yeah, he was. I can't remember what his <laughs> idea was, but it was he didn't want them all to be square because that was the point in having a square yin yang was taking it out of it being yin and yang. And then he wanted a rectangle one to take it out well, of it would that still again. Be yin and yang, yeah, it would. Yeah, so yeah, because it's, it's opposite, so yeah. it's still even because it's a square. And then he wanted <laughs> the rectangle one to take it out of there a step further. Um, what did bizarre. he? Did he? Was he happy with it? Yeah. <laughs> At the time, <laughs> but people, you must see it online. People will defend a shit tattoo if it meant the death of them because they've got it on them for life, and they don't want. They're in denial. They don't want to admit to themselves it's a shit tattoo. Like. We're in that um, Enter Shikari group and so many shit tattoos get posted that are nice designs performed by a shit tattoo artist yeah. and I just, I, I don't bother, I don't bother, but you get people that that just get like that shit and everyone then jumps on the bandwagon and they're like, no, 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 it's good and, and then people defending and saying it's good just because they feel bad for the person and yeah. obviously you're going to want you. If you had a fucking terrible tattoo, like... Um, you're not gonna just go, all right, yeah, shit, like or whatever, are you? Like, no. Oh, yeah, that's it. They they think it's a good idea, and that's what he wanted. So, that's that's what he got. But um, like I say, it's not necessarily a bad tattoo. It's just um, the fact that he had a few of them as well, rather than just one. Yeah. Kind of made it. Yeah. Although you always have kind of put your foot down on saying no. As opposed to, like, alright, yeah, so, like, you might, like, let people just have the design they want. Or maybe it's just because we're friends, I don't know, but yeah, I'm sure you've told me no to, like, ideas on tattoos beforehand. Like, I came at you with tattoo in my hand, and before you'd heard the idea, you were like, no, it's not happening. Yeah. And I was like, but listen to the idea or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So that, at least you've got your morals about you in that sense. Like, you, you were straight up like, I'm not tattooing your hands, Luke. Yeah, because you had, like, nothing. Yeah, and it, well, I still do. Like, yeah. um, but I came at you with the idea, yeah. a skin-coloured tattoo on the hand, which yeah. may sound ridiculous, but, well, yeah. You can't see and, it unless you're looking for it. Although I still had to convince him. He still wasn't keen, like, <laughs> do, do you know no, what I mean? Cool, you like, you're one of the customers. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, and that's it. The moral, your moral standings have changed. Such a good shot body shark. They're, like, so... Yeah, that's it. Do you want to... so friendly and awesome. Yeah, man. It's it, they're always really nice to me as well. Like, and and I'm not a big. You get a lot more tattoos than I do. You're a bit more of a regular, but even still, like, I mean, Steph's service is awesome. She'll always offer you like a drink and like make you feel at home. There's a bit of banter, but then I think if if well, I think like if you a, were the we're like a family, to be honest. it's like That's a family-run business, but we're not actually biologically family apart from Jonah and Steph. Jonah being the owner and the boss, who's, who's Jonah brought it the from owner, the ground up. <laughs> brought so, it from the ground up for the past twenty years. <laughs> Steph's his wife, but she, you know, even if she has had a shit day or something like that, she's still really chirpy and really. She looks after customers. all of you guys. She looks as well, after us. She? she looks after the shop. She looks after the customers. She's so so happy all the time you know and when we're in there like you say there's that banter and um, because we're comfortable with each other we can say anything we want you know sometimes we'll, we'll sort of bicker <laughs> yeah. but then then it's forgotten about and you know that's it it's so yeah. before body because body shock wasn't your first shop no was it it was your second shop yeah yeah what was um, the, the first, first one was a shop, shop called badlands badlands it started off as down st beauty where the pokemon shop used to be <laughs> remember? You remember the Pokemon remember shop the Pokemon down the shop. square? Yeah, yeah. I remember the um, <laughs> He used to he used to be up the road and uh, by another name and um that's kind of where I auditioned to work for him when he offered me. And how did me what was that process? What was the audition? He, he basically um cause, cause I was working from home, he wasn't gonna give me one of his customers or anything like that. He invited me to tattoo one of the people I tattooed in his studio to show him so you, to you know how you I had to tattoo somebody. Yeah, but it was it was someone that I already tattoo anyway, um, so it wasn't like someone new. It's that, it's kind of a bit it's it's a bit of a bizarre process. But, is that normal? Um, I think normally you just go by. Did you have port- to tattoo someone in front of Jonah and? Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> because because you know he he had already he had already heard what he'd heard about me and he'd seen portfolio and seen my work and stuff. But because I was so fresh and new, this guy kind of wanted to. Um, see that you know I could have taken these tattoos from other people's places I wasn't known I was yeah like, yeah working and nobody. At home and yeah yeah um, so he wanted to see you know the process making sure I was doing things correctly and um, it, it is a different way of doing it and, and a weird way but um, 
past year and uh, and you moved to a new premises and renamed and um, what? yeah I have him to thank for getting me on the scale to so come where we don't have to talk about this if you don't want to yeah what but, happened um, there why what? Because you spent a lot of time in the shop. <laughs> uh, I know two different <laughs> questions here. Yeah, I know where you're going with that. Um, so, f- yeah, first off, ask Jack's questions. You spent a lot of time in the shop. Why did you spend so much time at that tattoo shop? It was um, based... Go on. Well, yeah, I... Well, I, ju- I just... I worked there, obviously, a lot of the time. Um, and to start with, I was in a relationship and, and working there... Um, and oh, actually, I started started off working there four days one week, and three days no, it turned into four days one week and three days the next. Um, after a relationship breakdown and um, we had a kid, so I, I would we would share the looking after the child and um, yeah, and as time went on. Um, because of the relationship breakdown, I ended up sofa surfing, and um, if I didn't have the kids, I kind of didn't have a place to stay, so I would just crash in the studio. Um, so yeah, I ended up spending a lot of time there. <laughs> um, so when you got first started off in tattooing, you were, you were around tattooing quite a lot. Yeah. Do you think that that helped, or was it just a... Um, I don't know, you know, I think I was in quite a dark place as well. Um, this kind of, theme of this almost, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, we, uh, I wasn't mega busy then either because, you know, again, I wasn't that well known and um, so it was quite slow and I was essentially homeless, although I, I never slept rough, which I'm grateful for, for everyone that, you know, took me in and, and for the owner of the studio for letting me crash there and stuff. Um, it's hard for you some nights though, right? It was like yeah. pretty down oh, yeah, to the wire really some hard. nights, yeah, especially yeah. like having Bella and stuff as well. Yeah, there was times, you know, where I was walking like seven miles with two kids and um, <laughs> in the rain. I receiving a call about, uh, from you one day, like asking to crash with me and my mum because you had your, your kid and stuff, which yeah. is pretty rough man do you yeah, know what I mean because yeah, yeah, as yeah. you said as well we didn't really know each other that well at the no. point as well which just goes to show well, how I didn't want to exhaust um, mm-hmm. it, exhaust options you know because you know people can get sick of you and that, that's kind of why I crashed at the studio as well was mm, um, yeah. to save some of those asks you know yeah um, yeah just to put it out there as well I actually I had to say no that night, and yeah. I, uh, I, I hate I hate myself for it to this day. I'm I, sure um, I, w- I would have found somewhere. Yeah, I, n- yeah, I never slept man. rough, so I was always, I was always all right. But it is, it, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It's a big thing to put on someone, especially with the kid being involved as well. Do you know what I mean? But then, at the same time, do you know what I mean? I'm sure that probably helped you out to some some degree as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it it kind of gives you a sense of. Well, just working for something again, you know, um, and the amount of effort you put into something, uh, and obviously I grew from that point. Um, I, yeah, like I say, I never slept rough. I, I eventually um, got a place um, through the council, but I, I got housed, and that led to me working in this second studio. Um, was it, was it from a cro- Was it in Tor Point that you got? House. House was that, yeah. that the place yeah. that I could crashed at? Uh, yeah, that, yeah. That, that the, the way <coughs> the way it works oh, is so you kind of he lets you stay over. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. After I told him no, <laughs> and I needed a bed, and Gordon was like, "Yeah, man, come over. <laughs> Any, anything you need, I'll feed you." Like, come, we'll, we'll chill. There's yeah. a nice bed for you. <laughs> I, I know, I'm a bastard. Although it wasn't down to me. <laughs> no, you no, could no. Uh, You could sleep anywhere in my house no, that you could find it's right now. It's not. It was no for a reason, you know. It wasn't just no. Yeah, was, man. Yeah. That's it. My mum, my mum, my mum already had enough people in the house. Do you yeah, know what I mean? yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know. Oh yeah. Can can I have, like some strange guy over when, you know, and what like, you you had a. Your mum didn't know me. Obviously, yeah. I'm not this person. But like, you were that like you, bit you older had, than me as well. Yeah, good. Like, you had what a young sister. Yeah, man. Which would have been what about eight at the time or something, something like, like that. that. And then obviously um, we we did. Well, there was it was a three bedroom house with. 
six people in it at the time, <coughs> do you know what I mean? And, and that's it, you were she doesn't know who she's you were that bit them. older than me, and I was just sort of like, oh, he's like, you know, yeah, I think like we're in like a band together or whatever, but <laughs> obviously you hear that as a mum, don't right, you? And yes. you're just like, what am I getting into here? How old is he? Well, he's, he's, he's you know, 19, I must have only been about 14 at the time, so it was, you know, so how do you it know? was pretty heavy. I'm 24 now. So yeah, set free it. Well, that's a little bit longer than that. Yeah, man. Yeah. The 12 minutes. So. Yeah. What happened between starting off at this shop and getting to, to the body <coughs> shop? So I was, I was at this shop for like, I think it, from my calculations, it's about a year and a half as well. Um, and from that time, you know, crashing there. And I owe so much to, to the owner of that studio, you know, for letting me stay there, for getting me on the ladder looked after me we're still friends now um i pop over to his new studio regularly and see him and um, have you had any tattoos off of him uh yeah the spider's web on your elbow if i remember correctly i don't have a spider web on my elbow do you not no. what have you got on your elbow i've got you a got... compass and a strong man was it he one of did, your elbows he did tattoo? neither of those no oh, he shit. did tattoo both of my hands i i had this one covered over though um and this one's being edited slightly um i did have another tattoo by him here which has been covered as well not for any, it was a, yeah it was yeah, a, it was a good, was a good really tattoo nice. yeah, yeah but i, I like um it. i kind of got a new a theme for my arm uh which it didn't fit in with so yeah, yeah. um yeah one day i'll get tattooed by him again for sure um so what happened to oh shot? we did the tattoo behind my ear as well so actually my most visible tattoo apart from my hands is by him um yeah, but yeah for, from that you know we didn't fall out i I got housed in Tor Point, which was, uh, well, firstly, a different county, because St. Budo, as people probably know, is in Plymouth, and then Tor Point is in Cornwall. Um, and there was a studio literally opposite where I was living. Um, and I knew a guy that worked in there because he actually lived closer to the other place. Um, and he'd pop in regularly for coffee, and he knew the owner. Um, and while I was working in that studio, before I'd moved, um, I kind of said, oh, I'm going to be a neighbour to the studio. He invited me for a coffee. So when I did move, um, settled in, popped over for a coffee and I was offered a job essentially. And obviously because of the location and uh, the reputation of Body Shark and everything else, um, it just, yeah, it just made sense as as, um, amazing as the owner of the other studio had been. um, It it was just, you know, another, the next step in life business yeah yeah, yeah. yeah for real awesome yeah. Yeah. um so it's money to my phone which i don't have but um i've got a few questions regarding tattooing people um so like you must have every now and again someone who wants to get a tattoo in a really dodgy place <laughs> but, <laughs> actually no not that often no. like i know i know people that have um Anyone have to get their boobies out? Or no, as 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 have you tattooed dodgies? any vaginas? Any no, vaginas, no vaginas yet. Um, Not yet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm open to vaginas. <laughs> um, we'll leave your contact. No, but then, then that goes back to the you know this thing I was talking about earlier about um, sexual harassment in like tattooing and people abusing their power. Like you can't say yeah, I hope to tattoo a vagina. Skin is <laughs> skin it's all is the skin. Same. Yeah, yeah, skin but, is skin, and it's you kind just of be willing to tattoo. We we do Very everything willing. we can to make our customers comfortable. You know, if somebody's having their even their thigh or their hip tattooed, you know, it kind of goes over their side and onto their bum a little bit or something. It'll make a big deal out we, of it then. Yeah, we, we have, so know, we, we take we take the, um, like, as much as we can to make them feel comfortable and um, covered up enough, you know, like, we, we have towels and things that we use to um, to cover them up in a way that they feel comfortable and... Uh, it's very prof- it is very professional like yeah. it's always <laughs> weird going down with Gordon trying to have just normal mate bounce there and he's like in work mode being <laughs> like do you know what I mean but no yeah. he's um it's a seri- it's a serious thing you know it's it's a lot of trust involved it's it's forever you know yeah, like man. um even if you get it lasered you know you're still got you know that you've still been inflicted and it's very personal you know you're in each other's personal space and yeah, um yeah, you have to be professional. Uh, you can't really abuse that power. But um, yeah, as, as intimate as it gets, really is. Uh, it is more intimate, I think, on the on the opposite sex because you feel they feel more vulnerable um, mm. because it's the opposite gender. I mean, I suppose that varies depending on one's sexuality as well. If I were um, if I were gay or 
um, bisexual even than maybe tattooing men in certain areas. I would get um, feel similar to how I do tattooing women being straight. Um, <clears throat> but you, you take the precautions and, you, and you're really aware that um, you know what's private and more comfortable yeah, tattooing yeah. a penis than you are. Yeah, yeah, I, th yeah. I think yeah, it would be definitely yeah because it's but even even still again it's skin is skin it, when you're tattooing it you're looking at that piece of skin and not. Have you tattooed a penis? Uh, not I yet, remember no. you wanting to tattoo your own penis for some yeah, time. I don't know why. Why did that it, never happen? To be honest, I think it was purely <laughs> a kind of thing like oh yeah. Let's make it happen right now. Just to say, right? just to say <laughs> that, yeah, that's it. I've got a dick tattoo, you know. Yeah. Just an excuse to get your nod out. But you know, that was when I had ideas of being like really heavily tattooed like my throat and all sorts and um i've just slowed down a lot like i'm in no rush for that yeah um, you did get a lot of tattoos very quickly so I you're did. not into that you don't want the full tat look then well yeah but may maybe not so much you know on, on the throat and stuff it might happen eventually but i'm sure i've got not, plenty plenty of other places to get tattooed before then not you know? a big fan of throat pieces no, I, I, mean, I think i think the, maybe the back of the neck or on the them. side yeah. Yeah. i don't even like it then i don't but think then where, do you, think where do you stop because you get people it, yeah. that come like below where the jawline is or up to the jawline yeah. then you get people that just creep over yeah. and then do you just extend the chin a bit or, or extend you just the have temples a full face or, tattoo just yeah, fucking take it, it all the way over yeah, yeah man. but that's it like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't that's the line I think <laughs> that that would be one of the last places I got tattooed obviously by the face um, I quite like face tattoos I, I wish I had the balls to do a face tattoo I, I think that as far as I would go with it is possibly on the temple um, I don't think I'd have anything above my eyebrow. My forehead's too big. It'd have to be massive. I don't know, man. You've got a nice forehead. Thanks. Shiny. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, um, we've talked about <coughs> skateboarding. We've I've got a really itchy about nose. Tattooing. Well, got some more skateboarding. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. <laughs> let's, um, let's dive into uh, music. Uh, no, we haven't we, even touched on it. Exactly. The exactly. reason we know each other. Yeah, so, yeah. We met through through music before tattooing started. Um, it's not something. I don't think you've. I don't know. I suppose you have taken it as seriously as, as maybe skateboarding, but you've not really had like guitar lessons, but you still tread. <laughs> very unique style that's well something that's we that's, that's something i wanted and kind of a, i've had lessons but more learning songs rather than scales and things and as well um, anyone that doesn't know gordon whatever the fuck you pick up you learn to be so good at it good at it. when <laughs> we try, first met gordon there was a joke about how he was like like jesus or whatever like he was literally good at everything he did yeah. a fucking miracle and to be fair you, you said i'd see you four three times ever and i've uh, although it was in one day i've only seen you four twice <laughs> yeah there's many years yet for that but i think a lot i've definitely fallen more than three times but only i've only seen only, you yeah everybody same day. everybody will only ever see me fall twice. <laughs> um, I don't know what happens when they see me fall three times. <laughs> even, when, even when skating, like, he just, he just doesn't eat it. Like, I've never seen him eat it on his body. So does, did, uh, did music come after skateboarding? Did, did music come before Yeah, me, music was well after skateboarding. But it, it was after I left school even, so I was like 16 before I got my first guitar. I think I was maybe even 17. What was your acoustic. first guitar? Was it an acoustic guitar? It was a Brunswick acoustic. Uh, a white thing, quite pretty. Oh, you still got it? I've still got it. I, I picked it up the other day for the first time in a long time and uh, snapped the, the high E, so I put it down again. <laughs> but um, Yeah, as, in regards to lessons and things, I, I, I had lessons on how to play songs and things like that. A really good guitar teacher called Tony. Um, Livewire? Livewire, yeah. Brilliant youth club. Like they, again, they were an integral part of my growing up. Without them, I would have been a different person. But... Um, yeah, I never had lessons. I kind of, I liked that I only knew a certain amount. So when I was writing, I wanted to write different, I suppose, um, or rather less predictable. So knowing things like scales, I think you've almost got that um, unconscious thought to force you into playing the next note yeah. that fits. But without that knowledge, I would, there wouldn't be that. So I'd just kind of find what sounded good and yeah. or what. I perceive to sound good. Um, yeah, 
so so I think not not having lessons and things like that kind of gave me that uh, creativity, I suppose, to be a little bit different. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Was there a reason you started music? Was it for? Did you want to join a band or because it was acoustic guitar? Was it just no, something you could do on your own? Yeah, I think yeah, poss possibly that again. Um, there was some definite recordings of Gordon trying to be a solo artist. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I've heard. There yeah, are some. I found some on my laptop the other day as well. <laughs> yeah. But um, that was it. I, th I think I am quite a solo kind of person. Um, you know, things that I can do on my own. I suppose I don't like to... I suppose I'm kind of selfish in a way that I don't... Well, if, if I were to fail and it be because of someone else, I would blame them. Or if I were to fail within a team, I would feel really bad. Um, so I suppose a lot of stuff I've done has been individual. So like joining a band and playing in a band kind of allows me to be uh, more expansive my creative outlet and in playing the guitar but um it can be uh, difficult though because yeah then you because rely any, on any mistake any mistake i make as well i feel like pretty bad about and um and that and the pressure's on it it's always nerve-wracking always um yeah more nervous playing music than you are tattooing a motherfucker. Mm. yeah definitely yeah 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 um it's i weird, suppose because the music's Know, it's not permanent. It's really temporary, yeah. Yeah, yeah and sometimes the mistakes, like everyone is hyped on as well, but no one's hyped on a fucked up tattoo. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, again, like I feel more comfortable in that zone because the the only person there to blame is me, and um, yeah, I, I'm kind of in control of that. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's a control thing. Yeah, man. No, for being real. in control. I see what you're saying, yeah. and again, that's that could stem back from your roots of fucking skateboarding because you're in control. Are you more nervous playing live on stage, tattooing someone, or skating something that's that a little bit too big? Uh, you know what I mean. That anxiety that you feel when you're like, I really yeah, don't want to go for this, but you just have to go for it. it you know what I mean? Probably be more nervous with the music thing than skateboarding and then tattooing. Like I'm. Um, you know, tattooing. Uh, you can start a tattoo and, and be nervous about it because it's out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, but you know that you've got the understanding, you know where you're going with it from the start. Like um, if you're doing like a realistic black and grey piece, I'm nervous from start until putting in the last bits of white where you see, because there's such the depth in it, you see it, it's, it's not right until you're putting in like the last yeah, layers, yeah, yeah. Um, like building a house, it's not right until the roof's on. You know, it's yeah. kind of um, yeah. So it's it's got that kind of thing to it. Whereas with the the music, it's you make a mistake and like you've got this audience that have seen you make that mistake. The skateboarding, the risk there of making a mistake, it's getting something too big is injury. Whereas yeah, with yeah, tattooing, yeah, you know, you can take your time on it and. Um, you there make is, sure you're not there is making no mistakes. Yeah, yeah you make sure you're not making the mistake. Yeah, 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 yeah. get it right and make sure you put in the put in it where it needs to go. See, I feel like I would think that was too much pressure. Like, do you know what I mean? Oh, it's, just... it's nerve wracking. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah. But I suppose but, um, you need to be. That's that's a, a, right a kind skill of you develop frame. over time. Yeah, that's it. Um, and have the steady kind of hand for it, which I definitely do not. Should we? Uh... Oh, I've managed to get my notes on the, the notebook. No, so no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, should we touch back on this? Actually, I'll tell you what, I am going to... You fire away, Jack, because I'm dying for a piss, and, and I know we're going to sort of wrap up soon, but there's still a fair bit, fair bit more to go through, isn't it? But it's because right, I just guys. keep yapping. I'm dragging it out. Um, so I've got here, it's a good segue back into skateboarding. Um, are there any similarities between skateboarding and tattooing that... Um, sort of relate to both or? I've not really thought about it before I suppose uh, the only kind of obviously like I said earlier with stereotypes and things that they kind of go hand in hand but um, similarities wise I think it's just the solo side of it really um, that you're responsible for what happens and that's about it really and the skill level um, but yeah in skateboarding you know where it's you and a skateboard instead of you and a tattoo machine and someone else um, that you're doing it on, 
yeah, there's, uh, there's similarities there, but I don't think, mm-hmm. yeah, not not like a yeah, not not a direct connection. I'd say. What would you say makes a good tattoo, and what makes it a bad one? So you can have a tattoo that's done really good, but it still be a bad tattoo. You can have. Um, I suppose it depends on taste for a start, and like what your preferred. So something you could call a bad tattoo might not necessarily be a bad tattoo? No. See, because I, I have knowledge in when a tattoo is well done, uh, I may hate the design mm-hmm. and it may not be to my taste. Like it, it, I may say it's a terrible idea to have done that, but it's done really well. Um that's that's the difference. Like a bad tattoo is a tattoo that isn't done well. Like what? Um, what makes you point that tattoo and say that's that tattoo's done really well? Is there something particular that that's really difficult to do, or was it? It's it's not that it's necessarily difficult to do, but it's just you know um, if there's lines in it, it's having like if the lines are supposed to be smooth, they're supposed to be smooth and like wobbles in lines or um, discrepancies in the lines. Um, if it's colour and it's patchy when it's not supposed to be and um, you could argue that it's supposed to be patchy but you can kind of tell because of the way it's done um, yeah it's things like that like just putting the ink in solid if the ink's in where it's supposed to be and it should be solid in that colour then that's a good tattoo so have you got to a point where you're in your tattooing that you're, you're happy with all the tattoos that you're doing or yeah I, th- I think I am now um yeah, I've I've not. It, you'll never be a hundred percent happy with the tattoo. Oh really? Yeah, it's you're always going to be your own biggest critic, um, and but you always take something away from it, and yeah, you'll always be happy with it. Just yeah, I I think if you ever do a tattoo and you go, that's perfect. That's when you start going downhill, perhaps. Because you kind of feel that if if that is perfect, then you can't get any better. There's always more you could do. You're always against the clock with a tattoo as well, which must be like an idle mm, bit. Of to pictures. a degree, yeah. But you know, if it's going to take longer, it's going to take longer. You know, the customer understands that. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fair. Does anyone ever get pissed off because it's taken a while and they don't want to pay as much? Well, you know, if <laughs> if, like if, if you say that. it's going to be this long, full stop, and it's taken longer, usually you. Um, you kind of honour that and uh, oh, finish it, or, or, or that, charge sorry. how long you said it's going to take, because yeah, yeah. um, we charge by the hour. Um, so if you say it's going to take four hours and it ends up taking like six, you kind of you know you said it is going to take four hours, um, no more. You know, so you ha- you kind of have to be a bit um, lenient on how you quote a tattoo and say like three to four hours. So yeah, have so. you? Have you ever had an extra hour or two from a customer because you've been like, oh, I can do more with this tattoo? So they're, they're not saying, I need more time, or the tattoo's not finished, it's finished, but you've been like, I feel like I could do more with this? Have you ever... And make ever... it take longer. Well, no, <coughs> not... N- n- that sounds crude. I'm not saying that you'd go, like, I'm doing this for more no, money, no, but no, have yeah. you ever way s- said to a customer, like, there's more I could better. do with this, can... Yeah. Can we have some more time? Yeah, I think I have. I can't think of a, a particular example, but I'm pretty sure that has happened. Said so like, oh, if I do it this way, it'd be quicker because it's simpler. Yeah. But I think if I did it this way, it'd look way better, but it's going to take longer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's happened before. Like, um, okay, a good example is uh, in Japanese tattooing, if you take a koi, so you can colour it you'd have the line work of all the scales and you could colour it like a smooth blend over the line work yeah. from, say, dark to light. Um, mm-hmm. Or you can colour each scale individually, still having that blend, but each scale is individually coloured and you leave like a gap on each scale for a highlight or something. Yeah. Um, obviously, that takes a lot longer, but looks in my personal better. opinion, it looks so much better. Yeah. And it's things, yeah. like, things like that, yeah. Yeah, cool. let's wrap up um, tattooing with uh, we've had the worst tattoo have you got a favourite 
favourite tattoo that you've done? Or? Jack is dying to hear that <laughs> your favourite tattoo is on his body. It, uh, I, I think, no, be, I'm just saying that's what you want to hear. To be honest, I think a couple of Jack's tattoos are, are like favourites that I've done. Like, um, People always ask me, like, oh, what's the weirdest tattoo you've done? And Jack's got like the Bubba Gump Shrimp logo, uh, <laughs> he's got Rubik's Cube Man, like he's got a list that I actually reel off and they're all on Jack, but the weird ones and the quirky ones are the fun ones as well. Um, the Gizmo the, being a DJ, that's one of my yeah, personal favourites, yeah, he won you Steph, an award as Steph well. Steph at the studio loves that tattoo. Yeah, yeah. man, he won you um, an award for best, so, so best many of people, the day or something, right? Best uh, in show. Was best small colour and best of show. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Um, wasn't expecting to get anything for it just because um, shit <laughs> <laughs> it's badly done <laughs> usually when you when bash that out pretty quick as well yeah, considering yeah, well, yeah. like you we went for a skate afterwards That's like we had like time for the day man. yeah this is it like when when you when I go to a convention you know, I normally take a piece with me to enter into a competition like a customer with a piece in mind to enter into a competition but um not having that, we just like Jack wanted to get tattooed at a tattoo convention, um, and I had I had space to do it, so I did. Yeah, um, right. And it just yeah, you, you put effort into every tattoo, and obviously that that came through to the judges, and they saw quality yeah, in right. it, and um, it's judged on so many levels, you know. Um, and yeah, and, and it, judged it, it by like a, a legend in the southwest tattooing world, at the very least. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Doc, Doc Price, Doc the Price. oldest tattooist in the world. Yeah, man. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, I think he definitely is. Um, I remember seeing a video online of like an, some like ninety-nine-year-old woman or something like that in the mountains that uh, tattoos, but she. She? she wasn't electric tattooing anyway. Right, yeah. So he, uh, and and maybe, maybe she's tattoos. dead now. So so he is the oldest tattooist in the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, I don't know the facts, but yeah, he's he's a legend in his own right um, and grown with the industry as well. And you got respect, mad respect. Yeah, yeah, massive. Yeah, yeah al although you know, negative things can be said about many tattooers, and especially um, s someone like him who's grown with the industry things were done differently and now um, they're done this way and so he's still doing thing, some things like the old school way and people frown upon that now but um, so without that we wouldn't be where we are today yeah, so you yeah. have to have the respect yeah, for it yeah, for sure it didn't necessarily cause anyone like any problems or whatever no my, uh, my granddad had tattoos from him and they looked well they looked like just about any tattoo looks on like a like a 70 year old body yeah because of how it was done <laughs> back then as well yeah, yeah. man um, so was there, is there a favourite? <laughs> <laughs> um, I have many favourites I think um, I do really like your Jurassic Park one that one's cool that one's really um, I did one on Steph recently which was like a wedding tattoo uh, I did see that uh, yeah cool. I really like that mm -hmm. one I've done um, it's cool uh, that they let you do that as well there's yeah. a lot of trust yeah yeah, yeah 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 definitely Especially and, being and she like wanted it in, in my style as well because she's she's only had Jonah tattoo her really apart from one other guy yeah. Um, and he specialises in a style that she wanted, so that's that's what, why. Um, we'll yeah. link your Instagram in the, in the yeah, description. for real. Yeah, Definitely some um, good three good listeners. Good There's like a, a a wolf cow lady somewhere in there as well, which I really enjoy doing in black and grey, which I don't do much of. Um, but I really enjoyed that. It's it's the fun ones, you know, and and, and the quirky ones that you remember that become your favourites for sure. Yeah, man. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, nice. By the way, all my tattoos are done by Gordon, but don't judge him on my tattoos because generally they're me Just putting my work. they're they're <laughs> me putting my foot down, going, "God, I want this tattoo," and he says, "Luke, I don't want to put my name next to this tattoo." And I'm saying, <laughs> "Please, God, it's what I want," and he says, "All right, fine. If you really, really want it, so so don't judge Gordon no. on on my tattoos, but he's done all of my tattoos. They're I good think. Tattoos. Have you ever been tattooed by anyone else? I've never been tattooed by anyone else. No. And I like how because I used to get tattooed uh, from you. Uh, a long time ago when you first started and, and I like how you can see the evolution yeah, yeah man yeah. Like, for real yeah, for I real we too. both had a f I, I actually was thinking about getting a tattoo um, of the exact same bear but just as what you do it as now if I was like I want a bear a whole yeah. year, and just see what you come up with yeah, yeah man just compare them we both had our first tattoos off Gordon in a less than question in a more than questionable yeah, setting yeah definitely yeah man but 
We both gave up a little bit of skin, didn't we? Went very sensible with it. Gave up a little bit of skin for him in the name of helping Before him be what Before you that colours, man. This one you just had black ink. Yeah, Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's but, right. Because uh, it was later, wasn't it? That it, um... Because it was the... Was it not the hearts? Yeah. 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 On our butts. Glad, we, glad we could have been of assistance, mate. Yeah, thank you. It was a... Uh, yeah, Without so you guys, I wouldn't be where I am today. That's, that's <laughs> it. Without tucking those small you know, Honestly, parts though, that's, that's how it is. You know, every little... Like I said earlier, you learn from every tattoo you do. Yeah, man. So, no matter how big or small it is, and sometimes the smaller ones, you learn the most. Yeah. Um, because you're doing such less work, you can't keep working it or anything like that and a simple line work tattoo you know line has to be solid so yeah well we're glad we could have helped up. you man thanks you got anything what that's tattoo and wrapped, that's up? Tattoo wrapped up so i'm gonna go back to skateboarding gordon i i know the answer i know one of one of these but i asked jack as well who are your top three favorite pros <laughs> you can name the first one there ragdoll, ragdoll. anthony scalamere uh lizard king yeah, I've got a funny it. story actually. <laughs> Go on. Um, when I was editing the last podcast, and like um, we were calling it a poser cast, I was looking just through Google Images for like, I just typed in poser, like skateboard poser on Google Images. I saw a picture of this girl with a fresh setup. Guess what deck she had? <laughs> yeah, she was on the Nice. Great. So yeah, um, officially poses. Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah nice. Ragdoll, <laughs> Lizard King. Um, good choices. Yeah. Um, the Lizard King's turned into a bit of a bitch in his old age. Do you know Jamie Four Years? Nope. Oh, of course he doesn't. Gordon's yeah, like from I've, the I'm 1970s. so right. Like, I've never been. Thing is, I've. You've never. Really in, in anything, I've never followed it massively. I've always just done it. Um, I feel bad not putting out um, time and effort to those that develop these things. Because um, I should really, but um, yeah, I, ju I I always do things rather than follow them. I feel um, yeah, I feel like I'm not like a big been, skate nerd. I've so. been to watch skateboarding events, and all I want to do is skate rather than watch it. Yeah, like, I'm not, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Not that I'm not interested in who's there. I I am, but, but you um, skate for skate. I just yeah, I skate for wanting to skate, not for yeah, man. Um, yeah, like the following. Um, I'm not sure about a third person. You know, there's so many so many people out there it's defi definitely the quirkier people um, which is weird because of the whole hipster no comply thing that's quite quirky but yeah mm -hmm. yeah but ragdoll like yeah, yeah man it's gonna be like ragdoll's like a real like low key like people really don't mm. really know who he is I don't think he skates mean? anymore does he he's not no he does he does he has his own company called Hurt Life Skateboards I think uh, what's it what are they called do you know and, sure. and there's a ragdoll board he's not pro for the company but he has a ragdoll board and, 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 and they sponsor other people but two years ago ragdoll dropped in this thing and he like fucked his nuts up and he had to like crowdfund the money to get the surgery to get his nuts back sorted and that yeah man that's crazy did you do it good sorry did you help me pro out by getting some new nuts yeah. yeah did you did you donate to the cause? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you don't have a, you don't have a third. I think I, I'm not sure. It's hard to say. Maybe maybe a, going back in time, let's say to play in like the PlayStation games and things. Some of the first skateboarders I was aware of is is possibly like on the game. You know, everybody's like, oh, I'll be Tony Hawk or. Um, I think I started out playing with like Bob Burnquist, and I was a pretty big fan of his. But a name that pops up is actually Bucky Lassick. And I think he was pretty different. There was just something about him. Um, no, I was watching one kid. Stood around. out. No, that was Chad Musker. Chad Musker, yeah. Um, but also uh, guys from like the uh, Death Team, so like Dan Cates, uh, Richie Jackson. Um, just just weirdos. Yeah, man. <laughs> Looks like yeah. you take a lot of influence from Chad Muska. I'm surprised you didn't say that with those Muska flips. Well, I I just <laughs> it's just how I front side flip and it's apparently it's terrible. apparently called a Muska flip I found out maybe a year ago. <laughs> so we've talked we've touched on your board size and your your wheel size and your trucks. We know all of that already. Well, so high, but indies. High <laughs> indies. Yeah, yeah. All right. On board and board and wheels. Then let's let's go brand. Anti hero indies. Um, 
Bones I've recently discovered, but before that it was Richter wheels. Um, I'm not a big fan of Richters. They're yeah, too hard. Yeah, they were hard. Um, but I do, I do like do like the Bones. I always wanted a set of Bones, but I never knew never knew enough about them. But um, wheels, I'm not not too particular. I think I prefer the old brands. You know, yeah, that have man. obviously stood the test of time. Yeah, man. For a reason. Not just caved and yeah. stuck with it. Yeah, man. Bearings is bone <laughs> Swiss. Yeah, man. You can't you can't go any other really. But then they are expensive. I've only ever skated bone Swiss because someone has been kind enough to give them to yeah, me. Yeah, I was I was bought them as a gift maybe ten years ago. They've been in the like sea. Sixty quid or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they've been in the sea. They've been through the wet just all sorts and they're still fine <laughs> so yeah, yeah I suppose it's worth worth the money because mm. before that I'd maybe had like three or four sets of bearings within a year yeah man it's like popping out and shit yeah like. doing, doing like big drops and things um, one thing I want to ask actually um, touching on the pilot episode mm. seeing as you're your park skater yeah what are your thoughts on um, like because there was this whole story about a war memorial that went up that was like super skate <clears throat> people flocked to it and just started shredding the shit out in of Bristol it. the day the war memorial was opened skaters were shredding it right and people were kicking off yeah because it's a war memorial yeah yeah. how do you feel about that well <clears throat> um, in the past um, I, I could say it's, it's sort of like yeah, okay I, I, rather than the past I'll talk about now um so my boss is ex-military and I've kind of I didn't know anything about military before and I've learnt to understand and I get it now so <laughs> <laughs> just can we just can we take an intermission here <laughs> it's a really bad time to do that uh, just getting serious I just want to fucking I did get a screwdriver today. So you're shagging your knife. <laughs> Sorry, mate. All right, carry on, Gord. So you've got a military boss. Yeah, so I, I understand it all more now, and I think it is actually massively disrespectful to skate the war memorial um, because of what it's representing. Um, Surely what it represents, Gordon, is freedom. The people who died for our freedom to skate those stairs that are attached to that war monument. But you could also say that you're almost skating in their graves. That's exactly what I said. This is where Jack... This it's, is a, his... that's where, it's a place where people go to like to mourn and stuff. Yeah. And like, fair enough to do it maybe at night when no one's about, but during the day. It's like where it's... Be, yeah. I, it, it's almost like no shame. Like, I get I get it. Like, it's almost so good to skate that it's... You can't yeah, contain yeah. yourself. But, See um, it from both sides. At least be ashamed of doing it and do it at night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's fair enough. And in all fairness, it was it was a way that I'd never looked at it until Jack had sort of pointed that out to me. Like, and then you know, what if someone comes to the skate park and starts mourning there? You'd be like, "What the fuck, bro? What are you, what are yeah, you doing? Yeah, Go yeah. fuck off!" Like, sort of thing. So, no, uh, I, I can see that. That's, yeah, that's fair. But he is a little disrespectful, I suppose. But yeah. in the, in the past, I never saw that because I didn't didn't consider the military. It had never been in my knowledge. Or anything. Yeah, yeah. But, no, that's fair enough. But, yeah. as a skater, skate the fuck out the stairs. Just do it at a time where it's not going to bother people. Yeah. Like, yeah, which is, again, fair enough, because it is hard when there's a perfect spot, regardless of where it is, to, to not skate it, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. I get it from both sides, but, uh... Cool. Should we, should we start to wrap this up? Um, I just have one more. What's your worst slam or injury on a skateboard that you've ever done? Because I, you don't. Yeah. You know, and you've broken a, an ankle at Tamerside, right? I, I, I don't know if I broke it or not. I never got it x rayed, but it's pretty fat now, so <laughs> it may have been broken. But, um. Fucked yourself up actually, on Tamerside's force there. When I broke my arm, that was probably the most graphic slam I've had, doing a staple gun on a mini ramp, and came back in leaning too far forward. And um, just fell on, See, onto the water. I always thought staple guns looked easy, but if you fucked your arm. I used to do them, but this thing, I leant too far forward and shot out. And it just sent me down, put my hands down, but because it was on a ramp, there was the, the void underneath my arm, yeah, which yeah. let it give way. Um, so, but because I went into instant shock, it wasn't that bad of a slam. My arm broke, but it wasn't like a bad slam. Um, I think there's been two times where it's kind of full, 
full body slam. One was going over uh, a jump box and the wind caught my board and I landed kind of, I thought I was going to land, but my board moved and I literally just belly flopped. Did you wind yourself? Uh, <laughs> I think I did. I head butted, I head, had a watch on, head butted my watch and broke the screen on my watch. Oh. <laughs> um, and my eye went a bit funny as well, so that was pretty bad. Um, <laughs> and uh, the other time was something similar. I was uh, trying to pop out of a, a driveway over like a rail to flat and I just clipped the rail so I was about maybe six feet up mm -hmm. and horizontal to a, a full body slam as well. And um, I was okay, but uh, they're, they're kind of the most horrible They must feeling. be bad enough for you to remember at this point. Like, yeah, like falling and like grazing yourself mm -hmm. like hurts, but it's, it's really kind of, there's is. something about a fall, coming to a complete halt mm -hmm. at whatever speed you're falling. Did, were you there the day that I, I 50-50 Central's top hubba and I took a, I don't think you actually took a slam on that shit but it's, it's that when you, not top hubba top handrail you fucking that's it you go to 50-50 a handrail and your feet stick and you like fucking just yeah it yeah, catches man. your feet because you're expecting to go and yeah, yeah, yeah. there's nothing you can do it's fucking brutal right that's yeah. like that is the worst case scenario that everyone talks themselves out of skateboarding to avoid is, is that right there yeah. do you know what I mean but it happens I think it happens a lot less than you think it, it initially would when you start out skateboarding, right? Like, yeah. a slam like that happens once in a blue moon. Yeah, definitely. But it can write off a session, for real. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just horrible. Cool. Um, so, one, one last question. Go on. Um, so, you're on what is probably going to be called PoserCast because we can't seem to shift that name. We ain't got, no, we ain't got a better name. You got a better name? <laughs> No. <laughs> so, on the subject of that, uh, how would you describe a poser? Because would, would you say I'm a poser? I don't skate no. very much. No, no. Just because you don't skate much doesn't make you a poser, does it? I think a poser. We don't skate much, so that would make us posers. Yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't think even if you skate a lot, and you're not very good. Yeah, you're still, you're still everyone just a composer. Who, everyone who starts skates a lot and is shit, right? Yeah. So, so. But like, you know, I've got a friend who's been skating for as long as I have, and there's it doesn't seem that there's like much progression, but they have fun with it, and that's yeah, what matters. That if if you're doing something for fun rather than for attention, I yeah. think that. That's probably it, actually. But there's something nice about it, though, right? Because you skate for fun, right? But yeah. you, you do tricks and you kind of when still want attention. people to see and yeah. stuff. Like... But, like, well, yeah, and I suppose then saying that, if, if you're getting attention and you find the attention fun, then it's because <laughs> of the skateboard. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> but that, <laughs> that's it. Like, people, like, I don't know, people carry I, around boards and where... I think, I think a, a true poser would be someone who does do it like purely for attention like has a skateboard but not as an accessory not, as a fashion accessory. yeah a fashion accessory yeah. yeah because you're posing with it you're not actually using it for its intended purpose yeah. therefore well even if you are using it for its intended purpose posing with it rather than using it and yeah, enjoying it it would be yeah a poser i suppose that's it like i was never really like a skate nerd although i like skated that's it i didn't like literally the first six months i hung out with jeverett i don't think i understood like a word he said literally <laughs> yeah. do you know what i mean but i was still skating every day yeah. do you know what i mean and i think that's i think that's what it boils down to is that love for skateboarding regardless of who's the fucking best pro what the best trick is yeah. like or whatever do you know what i mean you just you just skate and you don't you don't really give a fuck about any of that stuff yeah like, that's it and you know i think that maybe, maybe the people that like follow it like heavily there are people out there that follow it massively like that that are mm -hmm. actually into it i don't know maybe they follow it because they enjoy it but they don't actually skateboard it's kind of like people watching wrestling yeah man. they watch it and follow it but they don't do it do wrestling. yeah <laughs> yeah that's you. You're the wrestling fan of skateboarding. <laughs> yeah, man. I guess you're right. <laughs> yeah, man. We need to get you out more, though. I think I genuinely feel like once Jack gets a trick, he will be. He will have that buzz about him. Yeah. Like, like he's putting. He's putting all of his work on landing <laughs> yeah. the click kick flip. I've got to. And know, that's a hard so trick. <laughs> I had so many tricks down before I had the kick flip, and they weren't even tricks that I wanted to have before the kick flip. But you just. 
You know what I mean? You're like, right, all right, I'll get the shove it, the fakey shove it, the the fucking. J- 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 what, what's next? Fucking, I don't know, nolly shove it. Yeah. Fucking. Then you've got your Ollie, your front 180, your back 180. But if you learn all of those, you will be so hyped. And I think the second Jack learns a shove it, he'll be hyped. Because that's what it was for me. Like, I learned to backside board slide. Just a new trick, having a new trick. Backboard slide. And I just went to Cinch and I'd just backside board slide the flat See, that's what I want to do. I want to get some 50 50s down or something. That's again, that's too hard. It's, it's really? backboard over 50 50. How much harder is a 50 to learn than a backboard? Backboard, you don't even have to pop. It, a backboard, you don't even have to pop. To you just. Yeah. yeah, we'll do it. We'll do a video on it. Yeah, man. Learn a backboard. It's scary, but yeah, it's worth that, it. Yeah, actually, like, some of the first things I was, I was board sliding before grinding. Hashtag yeah, fun. man. For real. Yeah. Like, it took me ages to 50. Even, even being able to ollie, being able to backboard. Took me ages to be able to fifty. Yeah. What's that on last time? Was that prime? Man, you uh, trust you. You just need to learn the basics. Even if it's a trick you don't want to learn, learn that trick because when you land it, you'll feel so cool, and that, and then you'll get that buzz that skateboarding yeah. gives you. I'll you'll just the you'll go to cinch, you'll pop shove up the top, you'll roll down the bank, you'll pop shove, you'll roll down the bank, you'll pop shove, you'll kick turn on the thing, you'll pop shove, you'll push back up, pop shove, push back up, pop shove and be like, did you just see that fucking sick line? Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is, man, but if you're landing tricks, you'll be so hyped, honestly. Yeah. Cool. We'll do a video. Yeah, um, for real. Are we done? I think, I don't know if we've got anything left to talk about. Anything that we've I'm not sure touched on, Gord, that you want to throw in there? Oh, Any nuggets so. of info? I don't think so. I never, <laughs> never um, like to say too much. It's a fun <laughs> no, we'll get you on again at some point. It'll be cool. But um, it's been a long one. Both the cameras have died. Oh really? Our battery completely. Yeah, both so of them. Phone's yeah. still going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. It's um, our lifeline. It was a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> okay, but no, thank you very much for for coming and chatting with us. How was it? Because no, you were quite it. nervous about it. You thought it was. Yeah, what? I think, I think you, you, just, you just got to forget that you're actually being recorded. I suppose and. It's a um, chill chat. Sometimes I've tried to say too much. Yeah, it's just a chat. It's a chill chat with me. Conversation as well, don't you? That's it. You you can feel like the centre of attention really easily, and you start rambling. I appreciate that, but mate, it was all good. You didn't. You weren't incriminating. It was a pleasure to have you. Yeah, and we'll do it again some other time. Yeah, for real. It was uh, just a chill chat with me, as I said, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. For sure. Cool. Um, yeah, check out Gordon's Instagram. At the hand of Gord, which is very clever. <laughs> very, very clever. It's like the hand of God, but with just one extra letter. Because <laughs> he tattoos, you know. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, hopefully have another one of these at some point. Oh, we will. We'll have another one of these very soon. Jevrit's Jevrit's back from London on the 1st of January. So, 2nd of January? 2nd of January. That's when I go back to work, so probably not. 3rd of January? Oh, actually, I've got a week... I shouldn't really be talking about this on the <laughs> but yeah, we'll find a date. And, and yeah, also man. Chris as well, I think. Jevrit, Chris, um, and mate, I, I actually think there's some other people that would have a go. That, uh, yeah, we're still practicing, so we'll see. Yeah. yeah, man. No, i got some people that you don't really know, but that I reckon we can get on there. On cool. here. Yeah. Okay. Peace. That one. <laughs> yeah, this is one second. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>